In our campaign 2012 coverage tonight, political reporter Jessica Arp highlights the debate and what may have swayed the voters. Well, tonight's discussion was specific to domestic issues, jobs and the economy at the forefront in performances designed to make clear their differences and their own positions. The candidates for president made strong cases against each other. I will not add to the deficit with my tax plan. Number two, I will not reduce the share paid by high income individuals. I know that you and your running mate keep saying that and I know it's a popular thing to say with a lot of people, but it's just not the case. If you are lowering the rates, the way you describe, Governor, then it is not possible to come up with enough deductions and loopholes that only affect high-income individuals to avoid either raising the deficit or burdening the middle class. It's, it's math. It's arithmetic. President Barack Obama and former Governor Mitt Romney spent more than the first 20 minutes of the debate discussing the differences between their tax plans. Romney claims Obama's policies have burdened middle income families. Obama claims Romney would burden them with tax increases to pay for cuts for the wealthy. Topics moved on to how to reduce the federal deficit, how to reform entitlements, and health care. How the president could have come into office facing 23 million people out of work, rising unemployment, an economic crisis at the, at the kitchen table, and spent his energy and passion for two years fighting for Obamacare instead of fighting for jobs for the American people. It has killed jobs. And the best course for health care is to do what we did in my state, craft a plan at the state level that fits the needs of the state, and then let's focus on getting the cost down for people rather than raising it with the $2,500 additional premium. The irony is that uh, we've seen this model work really well in Massachusetts because uh, Governor Romney did a good thing working with Democrats in the state to set up what is essentially the identical model and as a consequence, people are covered there. It hasn't destroyed jobs. And as a consequence, we now have a system in which we have the opportunity to start bringing down costs as opposed to just You're leaving fine. millions of people out in the cold. A moderator, Jim Lara, who struggled to control time limits in the debate tonight, often ended a segment by simply saying, can you agree that you have clear differences on this subject? Each time the candidates did, both saying at least once that there is a clear choice in this election. Well, and of course, the president will be in Madison tomorrow. What do you expect uh, will be the discussion from both sides? after this debate tonight. Well, Governor Romney spent much of this debate defending his policies against the accusations of President Obama, telling him he was, quote, entitled to his own plane and house, but not his own facts. I expect he'll probably try to continue to tell his own story and clarify his positions. Of course, President Obama will likely continue on with his campaign slogan forward, even though we didn't actually hear him say that tonight, but continue to make the case, as he did numerous times tonight, that it's not about what's happened in the last four years, but what could happen in the next Next for his closing statements, trying to make the case to people that he said he would fight hard for the middle class, and if he was reelected, he would continue to do the same. And it will be interesting to see what they do in the next two, too. That's right. Thanks, Jess.